Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Sorry for uh, a little delay. We had, uh, obviously, practice this morning. Uh, excited for the kickoff of the 2015 season. Uh, playing a great opponent here in the opener, and uh, we're obviously going to have our hands full. But uh, over the weekend, obviously, uh, introduced our captains, Travion, Deontay, Christian, and Dan. You know, I think four guys that the team selected that are, that are very appropriate. All four guys have uh, had great careers. All four have um, really done a terrific job of leading not only, I think, from example, but also from an accountability standpoint. Uh, so it's uh, great to watch those four guys as we move forward and uh, you know watch them lead our program. Excited to have Nick Roach be our honorary captain this weekend. You know, Nick was a great player for us from 2003 to 06. A uh, native of Milwaukee and Milwaukee Lutheran High School. He had 32 career starts. I mean, appeared, appeared 96 NFL games. A great player for us. And excited to hear his message uh, as, as he uh, comes back to campus here this weekend. So uh, if uh, the NDSU-Montana game was any indication of where college football is going to go this year, I think you guys better tape your ankles, put some eye black on, and hydrate. It's going to be a fun ride. So uh, with that, how about some questions? What did uh, Clayton show you that persuaded you that he should be your starting quarterback? You know, Dave, when it, we went through all the numbers and we talked about it, I think, at length about the whole process we were going to go through um, prior to camp, you know, just the, the empirical data, the leadership, um, you know, it was very close. And it was really neck and neck all the way through. But when you went down to the – just made it purely about that, uh, those numbers, you know, he he had he had won the job, and uh, so I, I know he's excited about it. I know he understands the challenge that he has in front of him, and I know that Matt and Zach are going to continue to push him and uh, continue to make him be a better football player. Those guys will both be ready to play, and uh, you know we'll see all those things progress. Hey Pat, what kind of quarterback do you see uh, in Thorson? Do you, is he a, a pocket passer like uh, Trevor Simeon, or is he going to be a guy who's going to? Show some athleticism and, and move around a lot. Yeah, well, you know, we put in the T formation, uh, and we're just going to run the quarterback every play. So, uh, well, to be determined on Saturday. To be determined. Sorry. <laughs> uh, two questions. Just going back to your last answer. When you say empirical data, what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean all the reps. I mean, you know, the efficiency mentally uh, to get us in the right play, uh, to go out and execute the fundamental the right way physically, uh, in the run game. Uh, making sure we're in the right play in the passing game, putting the ball on the right on the right player with the right accuracy, uh, right timing. You know, so just going through and we charted every rep, uh, not only uh, in camp, but we also obviously did it last spring uh, and, and put a little bit more stock on where things were at uh, from a numerical standpoint this spring or this fall, excuse me. And then the second question, uh, Greg Kuhar is not on the two deep. Is he going to be out this week? How's he doing? Yeah, he's doing great. He was in full pads today. Uh, you know, I would probably list him as doubtful today, uh, but we'll see how the week progresses. You guys are observant, like hawks all over that depth chart. Pat, uh, as, as your emphasis shifts uh, more directly to, to Stanford, you just talk about some of your major concerns uh, about them and how you match up. Yeah, well, David's done a terrific job. You know, I mean, it's, it's going on year five for him, and, and they've, you know, they've been spectacular. They're very talented. You know, it, it obviously starts up front on both sides of the ball. You know, anytime you've got the experience of a quarterback like Hogan, uh, he understands what they're doing, uh, you know, inside and out with their system. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want Clayton to think he's got to outplay their quarterback. I mean, that's going to be hard for him to do. I think he's just got to play the best he can within the framework of our offense. And then, you know, Christian McCaffrey, obviously, you can read the articles and the buzz about him offensively and, and the skill set that he has. And they're their tight ends, their skill set outside and wide receiver. And then defensively, you know, they're one of the top in the country. And uh, I, I know a lot of people have talked about how they've graduated a lot of guys, but, you know, you, they've got a lot of talented players that were in rotational roles last year and even some that started that – when you watch them on video, are very impressive athletically. So we're going to have our hands full. You know, a team that uh, you know a lot of people pick to win the Pac-12, and and uh, anytime you've got that kind of challenge in front of you in the opener, I think you guys get excited about it. You understand what it's going to take to prepare to get ready for it, and then hopefully we'll play and peak at uh, 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Pat, as someone who's you know gone from practicing to the playing their first college game, what is Clayton's? What is Clayton facing when he steps out there for the first time? Well, he's just got to play within himself. I mean, not not try to do too much, um, you know. And, and a lot of that also, hopefully, we'll be able to handle and, and help him with as a coaching staff. Uh, but uh, just go do what he does and, and be him, and nothing more. And that's what I've seen him do since we've named the, the starter. Is he's just gone out and been himself, and, and that's what I fully expected he would be. And 
you know, obviously the challenge is a little different now, uh, starting on Saturday, but um, that's what I expect it'll do. It's for pretty hot weather, Pat. Uh, does that put a premium on using more players? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see how that all plays out. You know, it's it was uh, it was pretty muggy today, and I know it's just going to increasingly get. Uh, you know, more uh, more humid and, and increase in temperature as the week goes along. So, uh, you know, definitely going to have to have a great hydration plan and, and be mentally and physically ready to attack that and, and, and not be uh, overrun by the heat. Pat, Justin averaged, uh, I think, about 20 carries a game thereabouts last year. With, with the depth that you have behind him now, with a few more guys maybe involved, do you see that number going down? Would you would you like to keep it where it is, or give him give him more carries? I think it'll go back to that quarterback question uh, that we had earlier. We'll see how it plays out. You know, I mean, I, I think from an overall standpoint, I like our depth. You know, Justin's an All Big Ten level player, and, and you know, we'll see how things progress as the year goes along. I, I really like what Warren has done. You know, he's a big physical back, and and he's had a good camp. Uh, he's had a really good off season. You know, and then we'll see how the other guys fit into the mix, but. Um, you know, I, I feel really good about right now where that depth is probably better than I have in a long time, Dave. It's it's fun to watch those guys compete. Yeah, what do you what do you remember about recruiting Clayton? I think the story is he, he didn't even start a high school game at quarterback until yeah. before he committed to Northwestern. Yeah, well, he split time. Yeah, he split time uh, wide receiver, you know, wide receiver and and uh, and quarterback um, with with a senior, and I think that just talks to Clayton's humility and his willingness to do whatever's best for the team. Um, you know, and his teammate ended up going on and playing college football too, but uh, you know, not at the not at the Power Five level. So to, to see the way that he was unselfish and, and and did that, I think is just a testament to his character. Which I see that Jordan Thompson's on the two deep, but have you made decisions on any other true freshmen who are definitely going to have roles against Stanford? Yeah, we'll see how that plays out on Saturday. Why'd you pull the trigger when you did? I'm sorry, on, on Clayton. Why'd you? Do and make the announcement when you did. Well, you know, I think, Skip, there's a couple ways that you can work through that that situation. Um, and, and this year, again, was, and I think I alluded to it, was very similar to what we had a few years back with Kafka and Bechet, you know, where the competition was very, very close. So at a certain point, when it's that close, I, I don't think you can make a wrong decision. I just think the right decision is to let that young man know that you're going to be our starter. We can start to define some roles. And they can kind of go through that first couple of days of, wow, I'm the starter, or wow, you know, I'm going to play away. If we can get through that, we can move on, and then we can get into game week and, and be ready to play. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I don't think there was a huge advantage in, with, you know, all the social media stuff right now. I'm sure you guys, somebody would have been looking over the fence, taking pictures of who was quarterbacking first if I didn't announce it. So I figured I'd, I'd control the message. And is there one characteristic you can look at, point to in Clayton and say, this is what makes him special? I mean, whether it's just arm strength or yeah. an intangible yeah. or versatility. Yeah, well, I would say in practice what I've seen is he's just been pretty unflappable. He just goes out and plays. I don't, I don't think he puts too much stock in any specific play. I think he just goes out and tries to be, play his best at a, on every rep. And, you know, that shows a little bit more maturity than a redshirt freshman typically shows. Usually their body language and their attitude – is either too high or too low based on the success of the play. So, you know, I think that would be it. I think he's just – he's pretty calm. He's got a pretty calm demeanor, and he's um, uh, hes a very talented guy, but he's got a pretty calm demeanor. Pat, would you like to use Zach and Matt in-game throughout the season? Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Coach, fifth-year senior Matt Frazier, offensive line, lineman, has had um, a staph infection, mm -hmm. and – does that open the door for more, ro more rotation in that offensive line? And do you think you might rotate a little bit uh, come Saturday? Yeah, we'll see how the practice this week plays out. You know, I think early in camp I felt that way. And, you know, we'll see how these guys progress as the week goes along when we get to game plan situations. Doing great attitude-wise. He's doing terrific. But, you know, I, you know, he'll be out for the foreseeable future. You know, I, I, it, he won't be obviously, you know, probably we'll talk. Re, re, maybe ask me that maybe when we get closer to Big Ten play. Pat, where do you see improvement in special teams coming this year? And have you settled on return men? Yeah, you know, I'd like to, Dave, get us back to where we were in 2012 when I thought we were the best special teams in the conference. Um, you know, first of all, we got we got to cover our kicks better, and, and our kickers have got to give us a chance to do that. And it starts with our punting game. We got to we got to punt it better. 
you know, our average has been down the last two years, and that's really hurt. So hopefully if Hunter continues to, to play the way he's practiced uh, and then Matt's ready to go there if, if need be. Uh, you know, from a return standpoint, you know, we got a, quite a few guys that I like. Um, I'll probably let you know who's going to go Saturday morning when you and I talk. But uh, quite a few guys that have done it in high school and, you know, we'll see how the week progresses, you know, their consistency as we get, you know, the reality of game week. Hey, we're in game week now. Let's see if you're going to continue to uh, be consistent. Pat, uh, going along with Dave here on that punt return, uh, opponents punted 59 times last year. You returned only nine. Mm -hmm. how, how big of a concern was this for you in the off season? Well, I, I'd like to catch all 59. That's kind of the coaching point. And when you don't, you, you, you get frustrated uh, as a coach, but you keep coaching guys. So it's a new year. And, you know, my expectation is, is we catch all catchable kicks. So that's, that's what they're coached to do. And hopefully that's what the guys will do. Coach, uh, Mike McHugh is another guy who's not on the two deep. Is that just a question of not being able to fit him on there? Is he is he all right health wise? He's fine health wise. Mm -hmm. Call competition, buddy. Coach, you think you'll have a little more of a run pass option with Clayton at quarterback? He's a little more mobile uh, than you than uh, Trevor last year. Uh, will you present that more of a uh, two 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 dimension to your offense? Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. I'm not telling you guys anything. I mean, you can keep asking. I mean, this isn't the pros, man. <laughs> I don't have any preseason games. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I'm sorry. I got one week to be able to answer your question that way. So. Any other questions? <laughs> Feel free. Coach, you've, you guys have won four of your last five season openers yeah. against non-conference opponents. Yeah. How do you view Stanford in a similar light or a different light with those other matchups? Well, I mean, I think it's always difficult without having preseason games. I mean, I've been one of it, but I think Chris Collins' team's got like seven games already under their belt. You know, it's ridiculous. Got to love the rules the way they are. But, you know, you, both teams I, you have unknowns, and, and you just got to go out. And I, I think not just in the opener, but in every game, you focus on yourself and how you're going to play. And it more times than not goes back to the way that you prepare. And... Um, you know, if today's any indication, I thought the guys came ready to rock. I mean, we we had a really good go this morning, you know, and so I think the guys feel fresh. I think they're excited for to be in game week and kind of out of camp. And, um, you know, every every opener is a challenge, and I just think we're healthier than we've been. I mean, especially last year. I mean, we you know, we were able to get back to training camp the way that we usually have it this year, and, and I think that's really helped our depth. I think it's helped our competition, and, and I think it's helped our football team by getting more reps, uh, and especially in comparison to last year. I mean, last year was a joke from a standpoint of what we were able to do in camp from a health standpoint. So and when I mean a joke, just from a rep standpoint, it's never joking to have guys hurt, but you know, we couldn't get done what we wanted to get done. So I think we're in a better place. Hopefully we'll play that way. Pat, I'm sure you, you remember how you felt uh, – as a player uh, before a game and yeah. before the season opened up. How does that compare as a coach uh, feelings-wise? Yeah, you know, I think, Fred, it, it has a lot to do with kind of your maturity as a player. Uh, you know, my first two years, I, I, I think I was very immature. I, I don't think I had a true sense of what it took to prepare to play at a high level. I think I did just enough to, to I think, be competent in what the game plan was, and I think – for whatever reason, I fell into that trap. And, um, you know, then I think as my career went along, I, I think I realized just truly how hard it is to prepare. I mean, if, if you do it the right way, the games are easy. And, and not that you're downgrading your opponent, but you've worked so hard during the week that you're almost a little disappointed that the three-hour window goes so fast on Saturday. And, uh, you know, as a, as a coach, it's totally different. I mean, it couldn't be more night and day, you know, from a standpoint of, uh, you know, I don't know. 12, 15, whatever hour days we do. I mean, it's, it's your love, it's your passion, and the amount of effort that goes into getting things prepared to have a, an organized, structured practice that you can get the looks that you need to get done and, you know, get the things accomplished fundamentally and schematically. You know, it's it's a great challenge, especially when you play a great team. So it's uh, it's the fun. We only get uh, 12 of these guaranteed. So you gotta you got to have your A game every day as a coach.